Hello, and welcome to a conversation on the role of value engineering in an organizational digital transformation. Now, I, I speak frequently about value engineering. In fact, I teach this process at both University of San Francisco and just came back from Ireland where we walked through this process with the students at the National University of Ireland in Galway. And this is a very critical process is if as an organization you are trying to identify where and how you can leverage data and analytics to really drive your business. If you really are serious about exploiting the economic potential of data and analytics, and here's, here's an approach that you can take. Now, it's probably not the only approach, but it's the approach that I recommend and I teach and I actually work with many customers on this process. And the process is actually quite simple because it starts with an understanding of what the organization is trying to accomplish from a business or operational perspective. That is, organizations have business initiatives, things they're trying to accomplish over the next 12 to 18 months. And we're gonna focus our data and analytics on that initiative. Now your initiative might be how to improve customer retention. It might be approved about how do I improve campaign effectiveness or cross-sell or reduce unplanned operational downtime or reduce inventory costs or improve on-time delivery. Whatever, whatever it might be, we're gonna pick that and we're gonna start there. And the reason why we wanna start there is because there is financial value associated with that business initiative. If you can improve customer retention by X percent, it is worth something to the business. And if we want data and analytics to be relevant to the business, then we need to start by focusing on something that's actually important to the business. Now, once you've identified the initiative you wanna go after, the next step in the process is to identify the stakeholders. It could be both internal and external stakeholders who either impact or are impacted by that business initiative. It won't be one or two parties. In many cases, it's eight, 10, 14 different stakeholders, maybe even more, who, have, who are impacted by that business initiative. And you want to bring them all into the process on day zero. You wanna make sure that they are involved, intimately involved in this process on day zero, because one problem that we want to try to root out early in this process, the number one killer of most technology projects is passive aggressive behavior amongst your shareholders, your stakeholders. If we don't bring them into the process, if, we don't, if we're not inclusive in bringing them in and sharing their ideas and their visions, then they're not gonna buy in. Oh, and by the way, we want a diverse set of opinions and viewpoints and perspectives because it is through those diverse perspectives that our data science work, our analytics work is going to be much more effective. So then once you identify those stakeholders and using things like from design thinking like a stakeholder map, it's a great way to validate and ensure you have all the right stakeholders involved for that initiative you're targeting to go after. The next step in the process and the key sauce, if I could circle this on the screen here in red without getting in trouble, this is what I'd highlight. We're going to focus in on the decisions the stakeholders are trying to make in support of that business initiative. We're going to go through a process to identify, validate, value, and prioritize the decisions the stakeholders are trying to make in support. And here's the beauty of focusing on decisions. First off, decisions by their very nature are actionable. Love that aspect of them, right? You know that you're making decisions, you're taking action. But here's something that's even more important. What you're going to find from your stakeholders is that they already know the decisions they're trying to make. And in fact, they have a pretty intimate knowledge of the decision they're trying to make and how they're trying to make them today. So working with your stakeholders to find, identify, validate value and prioritize those decisions isn't hard. In fact, you're gonna have lots of decisions. That's great, right? But we wanna go through the process of validating those, valuing those and prioritizing those. The other part of this equation, if we think about the decisions from a stakeholder perspective, they know the decision. They've been trying to make them for years, decades, maybe generations. The decisions haven't changed. What's changed by virtue of the data and analytics we have access to are the analytics. And so it is around these decisions that we're gonna to bring together the collaboration of the business stakeholders who have this wide ranging set of perspectives on how to make decisions with the data scientists who understand how they can leverage data advanced analytic techniques to help optimize decisions. And you bring these two parties together and you embrace the fact that they're gonna have diverse perspectives and diverse requirements, it's beautiful. That is where you're gonna drive success. And again, you're gonna to have to prioritize because not all decisions are critical. You're gonna to have to make sure you understand the, the linkage between decisions. Some decisions need to happen first, right? If I'm trying to improve customer retention and I wanna identify my at-risk customers, Maybe before I do that, I might want to make decisions about who are my most valuable customers because there may be customers who are at risk that I really don't care about, that aren't valuable to the organization. So think about how those decisions map out to each other. And once you've done that, 
then everything else, once you understand the decisions and everything else falls out, it's simple, right? I know the analytics I need to build now. Now that I know the decisions and the, the KPIs and metrics against which I'm gonna measure success and progress of the decisions, and I know what analytics I need to be, need to, need to build. I know what data I'm gonna to try to bring in and figure out has the most impact. By the way, you'll be surprised about how few data sets you actually need in order to drive some impact. And finally, lastly, the very last part of this process is you now know what architecture and technology you need. Now, too many times, too many times we, we make the architecture and technology decisions right up front, right before we've done everything else here, right? And when you do that, you risk making architecture and technology decisions that actually impede your ability to apply data and analytics to optimize decisions that support the stakeholders in order to drive value on a business initiative. So don't start with architecture and technology. You're gonna need it, it's gonna be critical, but make sure you know what problem you're trying to solve first. Begin with an end in mind. And the last slide here I wanna show, this is what we call our hypothesis development canvas. And this is everything we wanna capture about the decision we're gonna go after before we ever put science to the data. So we wanna have a clear understanding of what decision or hypothesis we're trying to prove out. We wanna know the business value of that. We wanna know the KPIs and metrics against which we're gonna measure success and progress. And by the way, again, you wanna have a diverse set. The more diverse you have, the more, uh, the more you can leverage you know, the friction and diversity to drive the models. You wanna understand the stakeholders who need to be involved in this process. You wanna understand the entities around which we're gonna build the detailed models. Again, the decisions, the predictions, the data we're gonna need, the recommendations, and even on the far right-hand side there, at least my far hand right side in box 12, is understanding the risks of the models being wrong. That is, what are the costs of false positives and false negatives, right? The data science team isn't gonna know when the model is good enough until they know how well it does in addressing the risk of false positives and false negatives. Is 90% good enough? Well, I don't know. It depends on the cost of the false positives. So helpfully, this, is, this process is helpful, or this video has helped to articulate the very simple approach, but focused approach about how any organization and any individual can take to think about where and how they can apply data and analytics to drive business value. And as I said before, it's got to start with a business initiative it has to start with what's important to the customer and your users, and it has to bring in the key stakeholders and that whole area around decisions, identify, validate, prioritize, and uh, value, right? Identify, validate, value, and prioritize the decisions are critical, and that's where the junction between the business stakeholders and the data scientists come together. So I hope you've enjoyed this. If it has been useful, please let me know, and I will try to do uh, more in the future. Thanks.